That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Talk To Me, the directorial debut of the twin brothers Danny and Michael Philippou, uh, which premiered at the 2023 Sundance Film Festival, uh, also played in Berlin. Uh, A24 is releasing it July 28th, 2023. You saw this in Berlin? I saw this out of Sundance. Oh, so you've seen it twice now. Yes, and notably these brothers worked on the crew of the Babadook because it's the same oh. production company uh, that has made this film, and they also have a wildly successful YouTube channel, Rocka Rocka. Oh, okay. I thought this movie was very good. I think it's a very good version of a very familiar thing. Yeah, it feels like an elevated version of a story we've seen many, many times before. Mm -hmm. The IMDb description, when a group of friends discover how to conjure spirits using an embalmed hand, they become hooked on the new thrill until one of them goes too far and unleashes terrifying supernatural forces. That's basically it. So this group of teenagers, they have learned, they play this game kind of like, I mean, it's like a Ouija board, basically like this hand, they hold on to it, light a candle and say, talk to me. And all of a sudden, like the spirit of a dead person pops up and then they say, let me in or I'll let you in. Let me in. Let me in. And the spirit embodies the person. And these kids have, like they get a thrill from it. Yeah, it's like, and they do it for 90 seconds. They're timing it. Everybody's filming each other. Even though outside of that group, everybody else seems to think it's a prank because what else would you think? Because we see images on social media or video of like, because the people, like their faces change dramatically. But um, once they blow out the candle and let go of the hand, everything's supposed to go back to normal. But this group of friends we see, one of the... So the lead is a character named Mia. Mm -hmm. Played by Sophie Wilde, who's uh, also making her debut. Oh. Mm -hmm. So she and her best friend... Uh, what's that girl's name? Jade. Jade. Mm -hmm. Jade has a younger brother named... Riley. Riley. Mm -hmm. So... Mia's story is that her mom recently died, so she lives with her dad. Two years ago. Or two years ago. Is that that recent? And then her friend, whose name I already forgot. Jade <laughs> and Riley. So they're hanging out. They decide to go do this thing, and they bring Riley along. And all these kids are doing this thing, like commu communicating with the dead, and they're having a gay old time. Like, just, they keep doing it, like all of them. And Riley... He finally says, I want to do it. And Mia convinces... This is the second time that he's been introduced to it. So that he's like, I, I want to do it. Mia convinces his sister, like, you should let him try. He does. But he doesn't convince the sister. She goes out of the room. Right. And Mia gives the approval. So he does it, and it goes too far. Actually, it would appear that the spirit of Mia's dead mom enters Riley's body. And it causes him to try to kill himself. So he ends up in the hospital from like severe trauma to the head, which mm -hmm. we can talk about. And then this becomes Mia trying to figure out what's going on because it would seem that when they did this little game, the spirits didn't go back to where they came from. They're still sort of haunting her. And it also becomes kind of like, it felt very insidious to me, like how the spirits are trying to... Like the film franchise, insidious. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the film franchise. So Mia, the spirit who's communicating with her, which appears to be her, like a bad version of her mom, is telling her like, Riley, you need to put him out of his misery and kill him. Because his soul is basically writhing in pain. He's being tortured. And, and that's where the whole like insidious the mm -hmm. further feels it feels like that to me but Mia convinces herself that she needs to go to the hospital and kill Riley mm -hmm. so she takes him because he's incapacitated she takes him on a wheelchair and like very easily carts him from the hospital bed to like a freeway uh -huh. and right as she's about to throw his body onto this you know busy freeway she herself jumps onto the freeway like she realizes she can't do this so she's killed, and then we see that now she's one of these spirits doing this whole hand game. She, except on the other end of it. But yeah. now, yeah, she's mm -hmm. a spirit. Which, to me, is the best part of the film, is that that end is a pretty good clincher. But it doesn't, I don't know that it warrants a whole franchise uh, of uh, 
this universe, but I'm sure that's what will happen if it makes money. But I did really like that finale. There are several memorable scenes mm -hmm. and a few that really like shocked me. And it's been a while since I felt that way about a horror film. Mm -hmm. Especially one like this where it's like everything, like the basic thing is so familiar. Like, oh, there's this thing that allows people to, you know, communicate with the dead. and Consort then with the dead. Consort and then spirits, like there really are no rules as far as like what they're doing. And it's all arbitrary. Like we're going to do it for 90 seconds, 50 seconds, whatever. And these raggedy ass kids doing it, doing it for the thrill, even if it kills. But yeah, the there's a lot of tension at times. I... The pacing, for the most part, worked for me. There is a lull there is, at a point. There's a lull. I do appreciate that it's trying to establish some characterization, uh, particularly for Mia, although I have a hard time believing that she is the only traumatized teenager that's part of this group that apparently is more vulnerable than the others to uh a far ranging possession cuz there's a montage where these kids are doing it like bam 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 all night long and they all I think fine. that was the hardest part for me to get into is the fact that I mean I know they're young people but yeah that we see that they're seeing these evil spirits or these spirits that that they're seeing are not just like a random person they look scary because mm -hmm. the makeup is very good it seems to be people that are <laughs> stuck in purgatory so i can't sort. believe that these people know that that's what's happening and they still are i mean they're they're doing it like it's like a drug well it, you know these kids are dumb and it's a i think it's a brother and sister duo Haley and joss uh zoe tarakis who we saw in that spectacular series nine perfect strangers i'm being facetious and chris uh alosio who's about to be seen in next goal wins even how they explain how they came on upon the hands doesn't really like a friend of a friend gave it to his blah 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 but it's still connected to a very traumatic event where this kid killed his brother or killed himself after stabbing his brother the opening of the film is we see this man run into his house or someone's a house, house like, like a house party looking for this other guy and the other guy's sitting in the bed like troubled and and in a very shocking moment, attempt, like attempts to kill the guy who's looking for him. His and brother. Then, the brother, and then kills himself. Mm -hmm. And then we find out that that person is the one, like they were, they, they were using the hand, and that's actually where this group of friends we meet got the hand from. Because even when Mia starts to say, like, is anybody else seeing them? things? I'm starting to see things. And then this, the brother and sister that have the hand are like, oh, that's just like so-and-so. So... So you knew that... Yeah, that's, I think, probably the weakest part to this story. And I think I need to understand why Riley is so delicious to these... these... <laughs> demons or whatever because the first time Mia's inhabited whatever's in her body points to him and says they really like you yeah i mean it just i mean it, it just feels arbitrary like uh, yeah. pick him mm -hmm. but then Mia's vulnerable because of like the grief she has for her dead mom who died quite a while ago i guess but i'm just gonna go through my notes for sure mia that character is on my worst hair for 2023 list she looks like she was just hatched <laughs> yeah Oh, I hated it so much. But she she's very beautiful, but that hairdo is no-no. <laughs> the problem with it is it looks like she had longer hair that had been straightened and styled and highlighted. And then she had like a neurotic break and cut it all off with like construction paper scissors. Mm -hmm. So she just looks crazy. But her texture is such that in order for her to achieve that style, that means that that girl is like flat ironing her hair. Mm -hmm. Which I just can't believe that she's putting in effort to look like that. So it's just... I thought she was supposed to look like somebody that's not putting in any effort at all. Be but the she, problem is there are parts that look like it's... It, I mean, it just... You have to see it to understand. It just doesn't make sense on any level. Except that she's like in a mental hospital. But even then, where does she get a flat iron from? I don't... Well, because she's basically... Um, she's avoiding her dad who looks like late 80s Fred Williamson. And... <laughs> And and is kind of ingratiated herself upon this family that's adopted her, and she, and there there's secrets about how her mother died, like it was a suicide, uh, and so I got the sense that she's kind of in in an in between state herself. Sure, yeah, the the symbolism could make sense for a lot of things, but there's no excuse for that hair to me. I just don't. Someone needs to explain to me how that hair do made sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess an important moment in the film that's symbolic is. In the beginning, 
Riley's sister forgets to pick him up from somewhere. So Mia has to go get him and bring him home. And they're having fun. They're singing. Chandelier. Yeah, they're Asiya. singing a Sia song. When Mia like slams the brakes on the car because there is an injured kangaroo in the middle of the highway. So she stops and gets out of that car. And Riley said, like, we have to put it out of its misery. So she says, okay. And she decides to run it over. But at the last minute, it swerves because she's like, I, I can't do it. I can't kill this kangaroo. And then that's supposed to be symbolic because at the end, when she ends up at the hospital and the spirit is trying to tell her, like, kill Riley, she's like over his hospital bed with a pair of scissors ready to stab him. She even sees like the injured kangaroo walk by, like put him out of his misery. And then that's when she takes his body and takes him to the freeway. Yes, like, there, because when she doesn't kill the kangaroo, she's like, there's another car, another car will come along and do it. And I so, thought that was smart. I think that's smart, except for we don't need to see the kangaroo again. Like, I'm smart. I remember the, I remember the kangaroo. I don't need uh, to, I, I didn't. Don't. It was a nice reminder, because I had kind of forgotten about the kangaroo. Oh. So I don't know that I would have remembered, like, oh, yeah, like, that this thing is playing tricks on her by showing her something it knows that she feels bad about. Sure. I mean, it's pretty basic, but I thought it was effective. Sure. I think it's, I think it's kind of moving. I like this movie because I feel like whoever made it and wrote it, like they, like they put effort into it. It feels inspired. So. Yes, I agree. Um, I really like the character of Riley's mom. That is Miranda Otto. She's playing Sue, who's, been around a while, quite well known. She's an Annabelle creation. She's probably best known for being in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. She's done a really good Bruno Barreto film from about a decade ago called Reaching for the Moon that I'd recommend. But yeah, she's good. She stuff. was funny because mm -hmm. she keeps, she's, she seems like a busy single mom, so a single parent. So, but we often hear her saying in the beginning before all the shit goes down, like she basically knows what her kids are up to. But she mm -hmm. kind of can't, she has to trust them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really like that character. She was well done. Um, the that group of friends, the one who has the hand, Haley. Mm -hmm. That's the lesbian looking one. She, the actor, um, identifies as non-binary trans masculine. Oh well, yep, I see it. So, mm -hmm. um, I thought she was. They were good. Um, I wouldn't have left them in my house. Though. They were so <laughs> shitty. <laughs> Raggedy and no, shitty. Not because of anything other than they just seemed like irresponsible. Disrespectful. Yeah. They, they wouldn't have been allowed in my house well, because Riley and his sister, they, well, the sister invites... Jade. Jade invites... Because it's that person plus that guy. I thought, who I thought was her brother, but maybe not. Oh, well, either maybe way. Maybe I read that wrong. Those two, they seem like nothing but trouble. They are. <laughs> you know, she invites into Sue's home and Haley lights a cigarette in the house. And then she says, put it out. And she throws it on the floor. That would have been the end of that. You would not be welcome again. So that's the scene where they all are playing with the hand and uh, consorting with the dead spirits. But when Riley... No, it's not Riley, it's Daniel. Daniel, who used to, had held hands with Mia in their youth, and now is dating Jade, which is... Which is the point of contention, which I think is funny, but I guess teenagers are petty like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when he gets possessed, the first time, he uh, ends up seemingly very sexually aroused, and there's like a French bulldog, or a bulldog, standard bulldog, in the group. When he... He basically starts making out with the dog. Uh -huh. And we see him like French kissing, like wet kisses on this dog. I, that was very memorable. It was very memorable, but also the whatever spirit is in him is suggesting that he doesn't like touching his girlfriend. Oh, was that a thing? I don't know. Was oh, I, it? I, no, I don't remember. That's when Haley says like that she makes a comment about how nasty that entity is. But he said he looks at Jade and says he hates having to touch you oh that's right that's right uh, i liked the score and the soundtrack mm -hmm. uh yeah cornell wilczek was responsible for the score uh i, I think it looked good too it was lens by aaron mccliskey who i think we maybe be, uh gave a poor review to for being the cinematographer on that russell crowe film poker face mm. so when me, Riley ends up going home with Mia and they end up like sleeping together, like just sleeping. But Mia's freaking out because she's starting to see spirits outside of playing the game. You mean Daniel? Daniel. Mm -hmm. And 
There's a moment where, again, I think the makeup on these spirits is very, very good. It's pretty good, yeah. And we see this lady in the room while the two of them are sleeping. And then she goes to suck. Like, we, we see the spirit sucking on Daniel's toes. <laughs> and then when he wakes up, we realize it was actually Mia sucking on his toes. But the spirit was influencing her. I thought that was a memorable scene. Mm -hmm. I think when... At, at the party when Riley gets possessed by Mia's mom and he tries to kill himself, he's like bashing his head against the table and then he pulls his eyeball out. Yeah, it's very effective. That was shocking. It's... And then the second time he tries to kill himself is in the hospital. It seems like anytime he, like, he be, is conscious, we're told that he tries to kill himself. He's in the shower and he's like banging his head violently against the shower tiles. That was very memorable. And so Mia feels responsible because the Jade, both Jade and Sue, who doesn't really know what's go going on, kind of reject her and say, "Don't come, o don't come over to our house again." So that, in that, and uh, Mia's curiosity to kind of figure out stuff about her mother that she still misses, kind of leads her into figuring out where this hand came from, and that's where we get back to the in the characters from the introductory scene and that's where i think the film could have used a little polishing because they go track down the brother of this dead kid and he chastises them for like you let a child do this it's like y'all are children like y'all living with your mom and dad like these are kids uh <laughs> speaking of that though i maybe i'm bothered by mia's hair too because i she seemed older than she's maybe supposed to be? How old is this lady supposed to be? Because she seemed... If you told me she's like 35, I would think she's 35. Mm -hmm. And then because her dad looked elderly, especially compared to the mom. Because mm -hmm. the mom seemed like she was like my age, mm -hmm. which would make sense to have a teenage daughter. I don't know. I, I think that hair made her look older. And then because the dad looked like he could be a grandpa, I, to like a teenager... That kind of threw me off. Sure. Mia looks older to me than the other lady. What, what's the Riley sister's name? Jade. Jade. J-A-D-E. It's a stone. It's a green stone. Wow. We're almost done, so I don't need to remember. A moment that was also memorable is when the dad is... Re we never learn what happened to Mia's mom. Mia suspects that, that it wasn't just her killing herself because when Mia talks to her, the, who she thinks is the spirit of her mother, the spirit's saying it wasn't suicide. And your dad's lying mm -hmm. because the dad reads the suicide note, which I thought was quite moving. But then the spirit of Mia's mom says that he's lying. I didn't even write that note. So you should kill him. <laughs> and just like a teenager, she believes that little voice. And then there's a pretty effective moment where the dad is trying to break down the door. But as the audience, we can see that the actual dad is in the living room where the like there's like a pretend spirit playing the dad trying to break down the door and is choking her. And then she goes to stab that spirit with a pair of scissors. And then we see that she actually just stabbed her dad. Mm -hmm. It kind of all felt a little chaotic, but I, I did think it was effective. Mm -hmm. So Mia ends up, I don't know if she ended up killing her dad though, because she didn't because when Jade, she has to lure Jade out of Riley's hotel room. So she calls, come see me. I know how to help your brother. Jade shows up and goes in the house and sees him. He's still alive. He's put yeah, a yeah. tourniquet so on So he may not have died. Uh, my final note is, I don't know that I would have been that invested in Riley if I were Mia. I mean, I understand that she has become like, Jade is her friend and she's close to the family and we see Jade and Riley's mom saying that you're not just a friend, you're family. I don't know that I would risk everything. Do, does that make sense? I, I, like, I almost wish it would have been like her brother who needed help, like, like a family member, not like your best friend's brother. Like, I think, yeah, there, I think there's some... There was guilt over that, but I, I think really what is driving her is this spirit pretending to be her mother. I think really that is and is in her ear telling her that it's okay to kill Riley. I guess what I'm saying is if I have a friend out there and your sibling is being haunted by spirits and a spirit tells me to go risk my life to save them, it's not happening. It just isn't. <laughs> I mean, it might happen for you, my sister, my mom, but that's about as far as it would. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. She, Mia was doing the most over her friend's brother, and they were kind of treating her like shit once everything went down. But that's just a pretext for getting to. I know, talk but to that mom. spear wouldn't have been able to convince me. No, I would have been like. <laughs>
<laughs> it would not have been able to convince me We're just gonna have to, to do see, all that. See how it goes, especially when they find out from that guy in that scene I didn't like that he says that the spirits go away, they basically evaporate if you just let them. He did say that. <laughs> I would have waited it out. Let's give it a week. I don't know. Shall Everyone we? has to die at some point. I don't I don't need to help anyone out in that regard. Anyway, what would you give this movie? Three. I would give it three and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>